Uh, let's bring in Jennifer Adair, president of the Columbus Board of Education. We're so grateful uh, that you have time for us today. We want to get your reaction from an earlier interview we had uh, with teacher Rev uh, Regina Fuentes. Let's listen. The district has put a cold stop to negotiating, which has caused this to happen. And, you know, we are trying to hold out hope for our students and for our parents that a resolution can be made. Um, but the district needs to stop with their, you know, cold stop and, and looking back to this offer that was not a good offer at all. Is there any chance that negotiation could further happen? So first, I, I do disagree with her uh, interpretation of cold stop. What the Board of Education has done is presented an offer uh, We've presented several offers, and this latest offer uh, never really received uh, a, a, a counter. Um, and so there are things that uh, definitely can be done. Um, you know, I think the bigger issue here is, you know, when I listen to the teachers, I listen to the community, um, you know, there's there are systemic problems here in our district, as well as across this nation in urban education in particular, um, around the conditions of our buildings. Uh, Columbus, Ohio schools are are no different. And you know, right now we are hearing and seeing a groundswell of uh, anger from our community. Um, and in fact, this is why uh, many members of our Board of Education ran and are sitting in these seats today to attempt to really make change. Um, our contract, uh, what is on the table, does address the issues that the uh, CEA leadership brought to uh, us to consider. Um, even closing a deal on this contract, which we will, does actually not solve the bigger systemic issues. And that's what the Board of Education is really interested in doing with our community and with our teachers. Now, these teachers have a series of demands. You touched on some of this. Uh, they want reduced class sizes. They want improved air conditioning, HVAC systems, as well as other things. What do you think is the biggest disconnect between the teachers right now and the district? And you know what, in reality, I don't, th I don't think there is a disconnect uh, in terms of how they feel and what they're angry about. Um, these issues that you just mentioned around HVAC and uh, uh, heating, those are addressed in the contract and the Board of Education has been addressing them in particular with our federal um, COVID dollars, which we refer, refer to as ESSER money. Um, we've done a lot of updates to our HVAC systems in our um, historic buildings. Um, we have over 109 schools. Our district is 177 years old. Um, so these are big concerns. But if we want to do what the community says, what the teachers are, are talking about, the things the board wants to do, this is long-term systemic change that we're talking about. And it's not going to be solved in the contract. Uh, what the contract does is ensure our teachers have the proper working conditions we have added that it ensures that they are able to grieve and use the collective bargaining process and their rights as union members uh, to let the district know uh, when things aren't working and, and we've agreed to all of that uh, what we need is uh, to come together as a community and actually solve the problems that large urban districts have across this nation because we have been underfunded um, we have been under supported and this is why our teachers and our community are upset uh, by the conditions uh, of our building Buildings. One more question for you. My producer's telling me we're out of time. What do you tell parents? You're going to go to virtual classes if you don't have any teachers in the classrooms and you're going to have substitutes teaching virtually. Do you have enough substitutes? Uh, we do not. We, we have enough. We do not have enough substitutes to cover all teachers one to one. Our substitutes are great. We did not outside contract with uh, substitutes. These are our substitutes. They are members of our, our valuable staff and team. What I tell parents is I'm a parent. This is not ideal. Uh, we know that what we need is our teachers to be back in the classroom with our students, and we are working every moment to get that done. All right, Jennifer Adair, thank you very much for joining us. A big story uh, for the Columbus Board of Education. We'll see what happens by the first day of school tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.